Stanislaw here, and in this lesson, we'll take a look at how to use mHUD3 in a few different ways. Specifically in this lesson, we'll take a look at how to use the different trackers included in mHUD3. Inside the mHUD3 folder, I'll grab an icon and place it in my timeline. By default, the plain tracker grid is enabled. change to a point tracker, I'll do so in the inspector. Using the 2D tracker means you only need one point to track. Then I'll use the position in the global transform controls to offset my graphic. I've set my point and ready to track, so first I'll click reverse and track to track backwards. Once complete, I'll track the remainder. Okay, now that I have this track to my scene, I can't really see it too well. I'll go to the inspector and work with the color and glow controls to make this stand out from the background just a bit more. Near the top of the inspector are scale and rotation checkboxes. What these will do is it will mimic the movement of the rotation and the scale created from the tracker. This particular icon has a bit of a flicker in it, and I'm going to make some adjustments to it using the controls near the bottom of the inspector. I think I'll go ahead and add a second icon, and repeat the process again. I'll change it to a 2D point, and I think I'll place it on this soldier right here. Next I'll hit track. Speaking of which, when you're tracking footage, typically you want to keep them in short bursts. You don't really want to be tracking minutes worth of footage. You really want to be using these clips that may be 5, 10, or even 30 seconds long. I've got my second icon up there, but when I play this back, there's something that I notice between these two icons. One has a heavy blur, and one has very little to almost no blur. Inside the inspector, I'll work with the blur controls, and in this case, I think I'll split the difference between the two and add a bit of a subtle, soft blur. This scene is starting to work great. I think I'm going to add one more template, this time with a drop zone. And what I want to do is I want to make sure that I trim my template to its final duration before I start tracking. And the reason for that is if you change it afterwards, you could alter your track a bit. I'll change it to a 2D track and attach it to our soldier right near the top. This isn't where I'm going to leave my graphic. I'm just using this as my track point and then I'm going to shift my graphic over. But something you want to be aware of is you want to keep your track point fairly close to where your graphic will be, depending on the parallax that's created from the movement of the two. After a few more changes, next it's time to fill my drop zone. And I've got a clip right here that will work perfectly. I think I still want those graphics to stand out a little bit more, so let's use some of these overlays that are included. Right now with my overlay on top, you can see it affects everything. But if I drag this beneath and place it right above my footage, you can see that the order stack now reflects my graphics on top. I really like the overlays because it's really easy just to grab another one and replace it and try out different looks for my footage. Let's move on to a new example, and this time we'll explore using the planar tracker. This will work best with screens or other surfaces, and we want to grab the corners of our plane and place them in the corners of our screen. This grid in the center is our perspective grid, and that's really showing us how the image is going to look once it's already tracked. 
Tracking can take uh, different amounts of time depending on several different factors. This can include frames per second, how much of your actual screen that you're trying to track, or even the size of the resolution. So something in 1080 versus 4K, something in 4K is going to take a lot longer to track than 1080 just because there's more resolution to work with. There are times too that you may want to track a plane that's similar to the plane that you're going to be working with but isn't the same exact plane and offset tracking can work out great but sometimes it could create a little bit more work because you've got to handhold it a little bit more. Now that this is in my scene, I'm going to use the options in the inspector to customize this a little bit more. Inside this map, I'm going to change it from hole to close up and this will let me animate this a little bit more. You can see my map isn't really on my screen, so I'm using the global transform to change the position and rotation to line it up to my screen a little bit more. I like the way this is starting to look and I'm going to use this compass as a bit of a target. I'll have this target move in position and I'm going to adjust this data rate in the bottom left corner here as well. Okay, so now I'm going to use that same drop zone template that we had before. I'm going to place this on my screen here too. And I've got a little spot here right in between where my graphic is and this map moves. Then I think I'm going to put that right there. Before I lock it in place, I'm just going to set my plane down and then track it. And that's very large, so I'll use the transform controls with the scale and maybe even the X and Y to get in position. While I'm moving these things around, let's talk about the Z offset and then the Z offset multiplier. The Z offsets will set the specific layers and the Z offset multiplier will work across all the different layers included in that same template. So if we have one set to two and one set to four, then the multiplier, if it's set to two, we'll set it to four and then eight. Okay, I think I'm happy with the position and the design of this. Next, I'll just fill in my drop zone and then we'll do a quick review. Let's add one more graphic to this following that same procedure. So I'll just drag it into my template set my points, and track it. You'll notice that I typically go through the same process over and over again, and the reason why I do that is, for me, it works out the best. I like being able to track where everything is and then line it up exactly where I want it, so that way I know my track is going to work right. Now that I have my design kind of set up the way I want it to be, let's talk about some of this background footage. This is really just the starting point of my footage and what I'll do next is I want to use M Film Look to kind of darken up my image a little bit and make my graphics pop just a little bit more. So I'll drag M Film Look right into my clip and I already have a preset set up for this. And now even though I've set up with my preset, I think I'm going to work with this just a little bit more and just darken it up. Now this is looking great, except I still have this track point right in the center of my screen. So let's take a look at how to get rid of that. First, I'm going to group the bottom clip and make it a compound clip. Then we're immediately going to enter this compound clip so we can work with just the footage of that. 
quick note about removing tracker markers is that most situations are going to call for different kinds of solutions. In this shot, we have the camera moving, but in other shots where we don't have the camera moving, we may not have to work with it or track it really over time. Otherwise, we might have a green screen and we don't have any reflections. So in this case, I have reflections and a moving camera, and I'm going to start by duplicating this clip and adding a mask onto the duplicate. With the draw mask effect, I'll make a mask right above my original tracking marker. So effectively, what we've done is we've created a section of just that video above the marker. What I want to do is I want to use the transform controls of the secondary clip and basically push it down so we cover up that marker with this duplicate. So effectively, what we're doing is we're just duplicating that clip and removing that marker. But I want to turn off the draw mask visibility just so I can see this a little clearer. And I can see the edges are a little harsh. And that's where I want to use my feather and fall off to smooth that out just a little bit. This likely won't be perfect as is, but once we put M film look back on, I'm pretty confident it'll be dark enough that we won't notice it. Yeah, and after turning M film look on both of those and then having the graphics, I think that'll work out great. The only other situation I have is that the camera is moving across time and the movement is revealing the tracker. So I have a couple options. What I want to do is use the control points and maybe even the transform to move my mask across time. So with my control points, that'll let me actually animate the mask and using the transform will move the whole layer. So I try to stick with just the control points and what we want to do is hide this tracker over time. You can easily spend a lot more time kind of color balancing this and making this match a little bit more. But like I said, I think once I turn on all my graphics and M film look, I don't think I'm going to be able to notice those layers. Let's take a look. Okay, I feel like that looks pretty good. I might still want to go back and I could always go and use the same techniques and remove those wires above. But overall, we've covered a few different ways to use the different trackers and even how to remove some track markers. Again, my name is Stanislaw with Motion VFX and for more tips, tutorials, be sure to check out motionvfx.com. Thanks a lot for watching. I'll see you next time.